IGCSE chemistry was my favorite subject. What? Before you come at me, this is very hard to believe, especially for many students who are struggling with chemistry, and this video was one of, if not the most highly requested video in the IGCSE series. But today, if you're struggling with IGCSE chemistry, you came to the right place, and I'll help you transform what you think is a nightmare to something you actually tolerate. <laughs> if you're new here and you don't know who I am, I'm Habiba and I took eight IGCSE subjects, these ones, and I got eight stars on all of them. So I'm helping pe people. So I'm helping people out by making videos on how you can achieve an A star in each one of these. If you want to watch the other videos on the other subjects, you can check them out in the description or up here somewhere. If you want to support me, uh, you can subscribe and you can also give me a super thanks. That would help me out a lot. This video will be sectioned off into multiple different topics. If you want to check them out, you can check the timestamps in the description below. Let's get started with the first and most important thing, the notes, where I studied from. Let's get one thing clear, and I think most people know about this, but this is not helpful. This is not useful. This is my A-level chemistry textbook. It's not the IGCSE one, but it's the same thing. They miss out a lot of syllabus points and they have a lot of unnecessary texts and you'll just end up with a headache instead of getting any help. This is just personal experience from my Cambridge board. It's literally endorsed from Cambridge, but it did not help me out. If you do have a revision chemistry guide textbook, that would be a great replacement. They are up to date, they are straight to the point, they contain all the syllabus points and they are very concise. and will actually help you out. Next up is to ask your teacher for notes or for class slides uh, because my main source was my teacher's notes. She provided us with those notes instead of the textbook and they contained all the points that we needed to study from. If your teacher does not have notes, you can ask them for their classroom slides. These would also be great. If you don't have either of those, then take class notes. P pretty self-explanatory, you just listen to the teacher and take notes down. Um, for online notes, there are only a couple of sources, the first being Save My Exams. I barely used Save My Exams chemistry notes, but they did help out in certain occasions. If you really, really don't have any notes, Save My Exams would be great. Bear in mind though, they do miss a couple of syllabus points, so they're not great to rely on. I've heard other people swearing by Z notes, they have chemistry notes. I did not check them out personally, but you can check them out and see if they're, you know, up to your taste. Last but not least, there's this chemistry teacher online called Miss Maha, and she does chemistry Zoom classes that are completely free on her Telegram channel. I'll link it in the description below. She also does notes, and her notes are amazing. They contain all the points, and you could actually self-study from these notes, and you won't need any other sorts of notes because they include literally everything. Next up is how I utilize the notes to actually study. There are two main methods. One is active recall and I've talked about active recall a lot but if you don't know what that is, actively using your notes, testing yourself on the notes instead of just passively reading them out because passively reading them is not very helpful and you most probably will forget everything you read. So is highlighting without doing anything else. Forms of active recall could be doing flashcards which I actually did for most of my chapters um, I used Quizlet.com to make flashcard sets for observations, for analysis, for reactions. Even though doing flashcards takes a long time, it did last me in the long run and it was a really great way of actively recalling my information. If you're not a flashcards person and you end up doing flashcards and not using them, another way you could do it is to hide the notes with your hand and to write down the information that you remember from the notes and then rechecking what you wrote with the notes to see if you got it correct. If your concept is wrong or if you wrote something wrong or all of that stuff, correct yourself with a red pen and go onto your notes and do some lines or circles with pencil to um, signify that you got this wrong last time. And then keep on testing yourself, of course, whether that's with flashcards or with notes, keep testing yourself doing past papers. You cannot survive IGCSE chemistry without doing fast papers because 
Past papers are way different than what students actually think the exam is going to be like without looking at past papers. So if you just look at the notes and try to visualize what the exam is going to be like, you'll never imagine the actual exam structure without solving the exam and seeing what it truly looks like. Um, like solving past papers and checking your marks is really fun. Specifically chemistry past papers compared to other subjects in my opinion. Anyways, I'm gonna get back to past papers later because I do have some specific points that I need to mention. But for now, let's move on to the next point which is how to specifically study for certain topics in chemistry. And I'm gonna divide these chemistry topics in the syllabus to four main points. The first being theoretical chemistry, which is all the stuff that you need to buy hard. Second is the reactions in chemistry, and this is self-explanatory. Third is the calculations, which are in stoichiometry and in um, chemical energetics. And the fourth is organic. You'll use active recall and past papers for all of these, but I'm gonna give specific points to each of these. If we're starting with theoretical chemistry, everything that you need to buy hard that is just text, you have to make sure that all concepts are clear. Because something Cambridge is starting to do very recently is to test students based on their understanding of the concept more than their memorization of the concept. So even if you memorize everything 100%, which is kind of impossible, you'll still not be able to get grades or it's going to be a bit difficult this time around because the questions will be more about understanding the concept. So they'll be unexpected, they'll, there will be new questions. When you're revising theoretical chemistry, you need to make sure everything is clear um, and you understand so that you don't get shocked or surprised in your exam if you get something completely new out of the blue. I need to drink water. Next up. Reactions in chemistry. So these include ionic equations, they include bonds, so ionic bonds, covalent bonds, they include half equations in electrochemistry, which is electrolysis, um, acid-base reactions, salt reactions, metal reactions, all that stuff, that chemistry reactions, basically. Most chapters will have theoretical parts and reaction parts. If you understand the theory part of that chapter, you'll most probably be able to solve the reactions very easily. And then also for every chapter, it's very helpful to combine all of the reactions in one place in a simplified manner so that you're able to have a reference point if you're solving past papers and you're like i don't remember how to solve this specific reaction you can refer back to that chapter's notes and see all of the reactions there but what helps out a lot with doing reactions is again solving a lot of question papers next up is calculations so for calculations this is actually very easy marks that you could get if you know all of the formulas, if you know all of the concepts that you have to do calculations for, it will be so much easier for you. So I kind of combined for stoichiometry and chemical energetics what you have to know. Really for calculations, you also just have to solve a lot of papers. Organic chemistry and many, many people struggled with organic chemistry. But let me tell you, it was, it, it's really easy and it's really fun to solve in past papers if you have the right materials and right resources and you actually spend time and effort into studying the material. For organic chemistry, our teacher provided us with this organic chemistry map. You can find these online for IGCSE chemistry and I'll, I'll be linking this in the description as well. To be completely honest, this thing changed my life completely. I just refer to this every time I solve an organic chemistry chapter. And then after like 10 questions, you start visualizing the map in your head. So whenever you're solving a question, it just pops in your head and you're like, oh yeah, this this goes to this and these conditions, this thing will stick to your head like glue. These have the reaction pathways, so from alkanes to alkenes, from alkenes to alcohols and so on, and the conditions needed for all of that. It collects everything in one place, so it's less stressful, especially because there's a lot of material and gets really you know, frustrating and exhausting to just look at notes. Organic chemistry is also a new branch of chemistry in terms of what you've studied before. Most people just go into organic chemistry not knowing anything. You need to make sure that your basics and understanding of organic chemistry are nailed down. And that's by watching videos of people and, you know, introducing organic chemistry, how to name compounds, how isomers work, how you can name those as well. You need to have a basic 
solid concept of organic chemistry to start somewhere to actually start learning the chapter um you need to know general formulas for you know each homologous series you need to know how polymers work these are very important and fractional distillation okay next up let's focus and talk about things that you must do to minimize losing marks in your chemistry exam print a syllabus and keep this thing with you at all times okay make sure it's with you everywhere when you're studying a specific chapter refer to the syllabus points make sure you understand those points make sure you're studying those points make sure you're not missing out any of these points because this is where your exam is gonna come from okay this is the the base of your chemistry exam you just mark them off and if you don't understand a certain point it's very helpful to ask a teacher what this point is about and it will give you a new insight on the topic and yeah next up is to memorize any definitions that you find in the syllabus there are probably like 30 chemistry definitions in the syllabus that you must memorize collect them somewhere in a pdf so that you don't lose them and you can refer back to them every now and then and test yourself on them really well they are surely gonna come in your exam one or two questions and one could be for one mark or two marks so you don't want to lose four marks on definitions you know memorize them really well next up do unit conversions know how to convert units and one example is how to convert decimeter cube into centimeter cube for stoichiometry there are probably other units that i'm missing out chapter two in the syllabus is very important and it is uh, experimental techniques it must come up and the questions are very basic and you have to know these questions uh they're about apparatus um what you name them and purity how to separate substances from other substances analysis is also really important <laughs> cation anion tests gas tests observations um state symbols write them everywhere you can everywhere they're almost always for a mark so you don't want to lose a mark on those yeah balancing equations you have to balance the equations whether they ask you or not because that's worth a mark and what helped me out is to have two periodic tables one for just basic re reference point that um whenever i'm solving a past paper i could use and the other i used more for fun um to kind of just study the periodic table chapter so periodic table chapter is about is all about uh, group trends so i like to just like color that periodic table and write down the trends and it's great practice while making you know making a fun exercise or activity past papers and how you can utilize them you can solve as many papers as you can but if you don't know how to utilize the papers properly it's like you did not gain anything out of it Keep a past paper mistake log, and I talked about this before, but this is basically whenever you do any mistake in a past paper, write down why you did the mistake or that you did this certain mistake in a notebook or a PDF, depending on what type of person you are and what you find comfortable, um, so that you can refer back to them later. You're not going to get anything out of the past paper if you don't check your mistakes and if you don't learn from your mistakes. So write those mistakes down and refer to them very frequently. And learn from your mistakes um, do not leave any empty questions next up tips on specific papers paper 2 paper 4 paper 6 paper 2 is the MCQ paper and it's very difficult when you're first starting out because you need to do time management uh, you need to take take approximately one minute per question you need to do time management and this only comes from a lot of practice your speed will increase and you'll get to a point where you're solving very quickly and still having time at the very end to check all of your questions you have to skip any question that you don't know in 15 seconds take 15 seconds try to solve it if you can't skip it to the end and come back to it later you don't want to waste like five minutes on that question that is too much time paper four is very very easy fun fact the first paper that i did for my cambridge boards was paper four chemistry and it went really well alhamdulillah like the questions compared to any other subjects Paper 4 chemistry has very short questions that don't require a lot of time to read and they're very easy to understand. Have fun while solving paper 4, you know? Paper 6, uh, there are like multiple tips I have for paper 6. First of all, 
Chapter 2, Experimental Techniques. I know that these chapters still come up in paper 2 and paper 4, but for paper 6, this is the, the very core idea of the paper. Be very comfortable with doing um, the salt type of questions, how to make a specific salt, whether it's a soluble, insoluble salt, with titration or not, and um, observations, color changes, they ask you about all of that as well. The experiment question, the six marker question, what I did and what I recommend everyone does is to skim through as much paper six as possible and to extract all of the experiment questions and put them in a PDF. Whenever there's a new type of question, you put it in a PDF. So you'll end up with a PDF that has a lot of different concepts for the experiment questions and their marking schemes. And you can study from that PDF and get comfortable doing those sort of questions. You can watch videos on how to solve practice from that PDF a lot. Once you actually start practicing those questions, it will, be ju it will just become so much easier than you think. Be able to solve any experiment question you come across. Ask your teacher if you don't know how to solve a specific experiment question. Watch videos on those experiments on YouTube. At first, you might get like one more out of six, uh, which is okay, but learn from your mistakes, as we said. For the chemistry experiments, you have to visualize to write those points down and not forget any important points. Last but not least, graphs are easy marks that you can get. Practice doing graphs, plotting points. Don't forget to do your axes. Don't forget that your graph has to be bigger than half of the axis in X and Y and accuracy of plotting the points and doing the line of best fit, easy marks and doing the units for those as well. Um, I hope that was helpful. I will link to you everything that you need in the description, everything that I can find, some PDFs that my school provided for me, but I had so much fun in chemistry to the point that this is me testing myself right before my board exam, my paper for board exam. I just wrote so much and it was so much fun. I had so much fun during that time. I even wrote pick up plans for chemistry at some point. Um, <laughs> are you a charged atom? I've got my eye on you. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, tell everyone about this video because it's you know, if it helped you out, it may help others out as well. See you next time.